Hey Poke Species 7 here, welcome back to the channel. It's another beautiful morning here in Grazyland. So, so far we have been uh, booking about with the Mighty Soil mod and have accomplished the following. Giant corn! No, wait, that wasn't it. Um, ah, right. We ran our first growth cycle and uh, we grew weeds. That was kind of cool and grew them a reasonable abundance so we sprayed a herbicide and then we ran through another growth cycle and when we get up the next day and had a look at things they looked really really good just without the weed thing which of course we cultivated them into the ground so they weren't likely to be there but they did not come back because we used what's known as a systemic type of herbicide which means it stays in for a period of time gets into the system of the plant same as all those nasty uh, fertilizers and such that they're using. And uh, Anyway, that's another story. And what happened was, it uh, worked as planned, and you see we still have two days of weed-free happy joy joy. So we planted some seeds, went through another growth cycle. Now, to get stuff to come up to this stage, they used a little bit of nitrogen, and used absolutely no potassium or potash, and that... I'm really happy to say, just like real life, is absolutely spot on. Um, in fact, so far I'm pretty impressed with the mod. Even the moisture cycle as we go through the day here, um, we have that real burst of um, hydration in the morning. And of course that helps, because the first thing plants do when the sun hits them is they basically take a big deep breath through their leaves, except what they're doing is sucking in any moisture and nutrient that's there. And that kind of jump starts everything for the day. So, uh, but what do I know about plants? So it's looking good. The next thing we do need to do, however, is make up for that little bit of a loss of nitrogen. Now, this is the part where I'm not sure if perhaps reality is about to take a little bit of a walk. Because truth be told, well, if I was to go by size, I would say, yeah, maybe we could feed these, again, an even mix of the uh, NPK ratio. Oh, and by the way, when I kept saying we were a point down on nutrition, my apologies, of course I meant nitrogen. And I'm going to blame this on that whole memory thing. I always tell you guys I have such a terrible memory. That's an example of how bad it is. Sometimes I can actually forget what word I was going to say between my brain and my tongue, which probably doesn't take that long. Granted, it's probably not as fast as it used to be, but it, I'm sure it doesn't take that long. But apparently it's longer than my memory span. For instance, where the heck did I park the frog? <laughs> I do believe it's right over here. Alright, it's big, it's green and yellow, it's the frog. Okie dokie. Good to see you. All right, we can get out that door. So, yeah, because if that is as young as it looks, then we could get away with one more um, dosage of a fairly moderated, like mixed, evenly mixed, that's what I'm trying to think of, uh, a fairly even mix of uh, all three of the, the main nutrients, the main nutrient levels. There we go, we're out. Now we actually have to go and park over here and fill up a little bit and change. And then likely, um, again, usually brought on by the uh, sun tipping a little lower across the horizon so you get the lower angle and the different light spectrum, your plants would want to start to flower. And at that point, they don't want to be eating a lot of nitrogen. They want to start moving on to a almost strict PK diet with just enough nitrogen to keep the leaves open and happy as long as they're producing Joy Joy sugars for the plants to eat. Okay, are we not? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Fill your frog up with seeds. Let's see how far down the field that gets you, buddy. Good thing I didn't send a hired help out to him to do this. They would have done it right. There we are, now that we're parked in front of the fertilizer, we'll fill her back up. Well, we'll get in a little closer. There we are. 
contact. And why are we not? Hmm. Why are we not? No, I don't want to refuel. Is that what you were doing, you silly bully? Select spray type. Well, maybe you want me to do... Uh, what did we want? Not water, not NPK, not PK. We actually want some N. Alright. Now... Why will you not fill up? Oh, well, don't... Fill up with fuel? <laughs> You're still filling up with fuel. Why are you doing this to me? Hmm... We managed to get it the last time. Why will you not fill up, you silly thing? Hmm. Did I have to pull up to it sideways, maybe? <laughs> Am I just messing with the trigger? Here, trigger! No, refuel. Why will it not allow me to fill my sprayer? All of a sudden lease. Hmm. Wonder if this has something to do with the fact that it already has something in it. But that's not enough to do our field. Well, it might be enough to do field seven. Because I get a feeling I think I've run into this before. I mean it might have been way back in FS thirteen, mind you, but it seems to me I ran into this. And I do believe it was right after they got into the whole NPK thing there. Oops. You have no idea where you're going, do you? Yeah, there's all them pretty red flowers that it turns out are actually hideous weeds. <laughs> Nicest looking thing on the farm at this point. Okay. And here we go. There's our nice cereal crop. So let's get a little bit of nitrogen looped out on here. Yeah, because it still says we're good for uh, our PK mix, and as I say, so it should. This thing's deceivingly large. Well, probably not that large. I believe it took three runs. Oops. Didn't that? Three runs to get down here. Hopefully this will show. Damn, this thing's big. There we go. Alright. Let's get this on there, shall we? Well, that's not going to be the easiest to see, that's for sure. Can I hire the worker? And how is that going to hold out? 908. Eek! We might not even be able to do this field. Oh yeah, we will. Boom. And back it up, Bubbo. Yeah, I think I can see a... Sure. I can see a line there, not a problem. Not a problem. And they're off. So my apologies guys that there hasn't been any extra sort of videos as I usually do. I usually manage to get... Oops! <laughs> don't hit the S button, you're in the middle of a field. I usually manage to get one of our other series up, as well as just the farming videos. Um, you know, Farm Giant or something like that. But, uh, actually I've been back up uh, helping my buddy with the firewood. 
because there is only a couple of weekends left in the month and we cannot go up there on uh, weekdays so we have been pretty brutally working away at it and uh, thanks to the fact that I'm rather an arthritic beat up old bugger it takes its toll but don't mind helping the guy out sort of the way things get done in the world if you're living in the right part of it I guess but a rather amazing thing today we were on our way back with a really nice load and uh, we stop and look at about 50 feet up the road from us and about 50 feet up the hill are standing a small herd of about nine elk very very large elk <laughs> yeah it's kind of funny they are not uh, not in fact indigenous to this area um, some conservation types brought them up here in the hopes that uh, because we do still have so much the forest like the areas they once lived in they would uh, adapt and perhaps start to breed so that great expense and uh, some amount of furor amongst the press and others these elk were imported and released into the wilds of the Sunshine Coast and uh, well oh I still got some don't I hmm all right well let's see if we can't zump it off onto the other field so anyway yeah we they were uh, released into the wilds and like I said the hope was that they would breed and do all that well scary enough they just up and disappeared and I mean outright disappeared no one had any idea what had happened to these things you know everything from well it was poachers to you know maybe the grizzlies didn't like having them come into their territory or I don't know everything right down to you know alien abduction theories I'm sure must have come in at some point because they always do but uh, and I'm not talking about they disappeared for a year or two after they released I'm talking decades people for decades absolutely no one could find these things and then uh, a little while back they started to show up by the hundreds like whatever deep little nook in the woods they found they really liked it oh yeah it made them happy happy elks mm -hmm. but uh, so anyway yeah it was uh, rather a, an interesting way to end the day well to end the day portion from the bush anyway so uh, yeah kind of a bonus we got a really good load of wood on and I think he's uh, oh that's it we are out so I think he's actually got enough now to uh, that's a shadow from a tree right yeah okay got enough to get himself through the winter so anything above this we'll just be stocking up because we put about three quart in now so. we did just over double that a couple of years ago when we went out so that's why we didn't have to go for a couple of years if we can do that again well more power to us car oh, game on here we go but anyway enough of my bushy adventures so that's one field we have sprayed with a hopefully suitable quantity of nitrogen based nutrients Do and that of course is a very rough description of what was in fact sprayed on them you don't spray straight nitrogen that's kind of weird Plus, their plants require things like micronutrients, macronutrients. There's differences between all of these things. Refill sprayer. Okay, so that is the thing. This must be bone empty. Hmm. So you can change it to whatever you want when you're near here, but you can't refill until you've actually emptied it. Well, there you 
just go. So we'll let it fill right up here. Costs us a dollar or two, but you know what? We have a dollar or two. So we'll, we'll just carry right on with it. So yeah, we, um, we'll be doing that a couple more weekends, hopefully. And uh, with any luck at all, we'll get them a decent amount of wood put up for the winter. And it was neat to see something other than our usual um, argument of ravens that like to always come and find out why someone dares be in their woods. And uh, if you've ever been up close and personal to a BC raven, you'll realize they are potentially quite a threatening animal. Well, bird, if you will. Yeah. They are not small, and they are not short of built-in weaponry. The beak on a raven up close looks like it could pretty much slice your leg open from hinkle to, well, you know, the thing that dangles at the other end from the ankle. But then again, I've seen them carry off full-grown rabbits without much of an effort, so they are reasonably, uh, reasonably formidable little bugger. But like I say, I'm curious. Boy, oh boy. And they can make some noises. Things you just wouldn't expect to come out of a bird. Like high-pitched pong noises that just ring across the bush. Make everything just go dead quiet. You hear all these little dicky birds chirping away. And woodpeckers hammering at the trees. And squirrels screaming at each other. And then a raven will let out one of these noises. And dead silence for like ten minutes. <laughs> It's great, you know. There's that old woman that lives up on the seventh floor that keeps yelling out the window, Shut up down there! Except they actually listen to this one. <laughs> Alright, so we are going to end up this field. And, uh, yeah, it's more of that farming terminology. <laughs> Let's see what that does for us. Can do us no harm. Because here we are as well. And our moisture level is down a bit. Like I said, that seems to take quite a variance throughout the day. But this has to help because this is not uh, this is not talcum powder and it is not lime we are putting on the field. So by all rights, our moisture level should go up a little bit. Because I'm sure this is like 97% water, whatever this mix is. It usually is. I actually worked for a uh, plant nutrient company for a number of years, so... Got to know a little bit about it. Well, I think this field, if I remember rightly, is going to need uh, one or two extra stripes above the uh, <laughs> the three that were required for the other one. See? Well, that's alright. This is what it's about, right guys? Because, yeah, this... Uh, this is a fairly happy little field, this one. Well, I know that at the moment there is a great demand for potatoes up at the Adika. But you know what? I think we're actually going to take a pass on it. And at this point in time, uh, the potatoes that we have, I think I'm going to be quite happy if we just hang on to those and allow our cows to eat them. Again, why this is, I don't know, but it seems our cows have a real thing for potatoes, man. I, I don't know. Like I say, I am not a farmer, but I had no idea that cows were such fans of potatoes. You know? I, I, I mean, okay, I like french fries and hamburgers, but that's how I relate cows to potatoes, you know what I mean? And I don't think there's anything weird about that. <laughs> Oh my. 
Uh, here's something else just to have something to yip about. And I don't know how you guys feel about this, so please don't be offended if you happen to be one of these people. But it is that time of the year here in British Columbia, especially out here on the beautiful Sunshine Coast, where things are green and blooming and flowers are sprouting up. And you'd think it was, uh, you know, sometime in late May, but that's just what our Aprils are like. And, uh... With that comes, well, I'm not sure what the um, proper term for this particular event is, but I'm going to call it a plague. <laughs> and it is a plague of baby rabbits. Yeah. Um, if I don't see 20 or 30 a day, um, it's probably because it is such a fearsomely windy and rainy day that they are all hiding in the blackberry bushes. But yeah, it's just crazy. And they breed so vehemently here that we actually get three cycles usually in the spring. Like a nice long spring like this that started way back darn near in the middle of February. Yeah, we will have probably three full breedings of rabbits. And that's fine. Because I understand, like so many people do, and like a heck of a lot more people did only half a century ago, basically what a rabbit is, and this is the part where I really hope no one gets offended, but a rabbit is what everything that is not a rabbit, but likes to eat meat, actually eats. And so, my issue with it comes into the fact that I like Manx cats, and you guys know I have cats. And one of them passed away there just before Christmas, one of my fine Manx kitties. The other one is, um, well, he's in his prime. He's about 10 years old. He's tough as nails, and being a Manx, of course, he's one of the most agile things to ever hit the planet. He also has an almost revolting taste for rabbit. Um, <laughs> So this time of year I receive a lot of flack about a year cat and his rabbit hunting policy. So, but yeah, and it's kind of funny because, um, well those of you that are North American will know the store because it is a very, very popular large chain, Safeway, um, a large grocery chain all over Canada, and I do believe it is uh, all through the states as well. I could be wrong. I probably am. I'm, I've just been a long time, and I usually, if I'm uh, somewhere strange and amazing, which of course the U.S. is if you're Canadian, <laughs> um, I tend to try and go places that I do not frequent when I'm simply at home. Otherwise, what is the point of leaving home, right? So, um, but anyway, it was uh, not that long ago, I would think 20 years ago, when I used to be able to buy rabbit to eat out of the local Safeways. And, uh, like I said, they're one of the biggest food chains around, or they, they certainly were at that time, because uh, the big superstores and something didn't exist at that time. These guys were the superstores of their age. So, uh, yeah. Of course, now it's all... Uh, Easter bunnies and chocolate eggs, I guess, because you just get strange looks when you ask for it. <laughs> but yeah, it is definitely bunny season here in the Sunshine Coast of British Columbia. I will tell you that for nothing. And I will tell you something else. This is one big field. One big field. Looks like we're going to have to get at least a spray or two more here. I'm thinking two. Although one is going to be about 90% overspray, I think. But I don't want to leave a 20-foot strip down the end because that, uh, well, this is measured out in squares, which means anywhere that things aren't right will reflect poorly upon the neighboring areas, even if they are right. So, and I would like to see this to be a fairly successful test. Although, like I said last episode, I think I may have already pooched this. I should have thought about some of the other aspects of this in advance, as far as 
how many points of what you lose per cycle, but it's kind of hard to do when you don't really know how many cycles you're going to have. Again, I think uh, I should have probably just simply figured that out from the uh, instructions that were provided. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm just going to have that one little bitty thing there on the edge. There's no point going slack here. I'll give it a bit of override right from the start. There we go. Two, I'm going to be coming down almost the exact same line. Otherwise, I'll wrap these suckers on trees. Yeah, if you guys do decide to pick this mod up, and it is on Mod Hoster, um, be aware of one thing. Unlike some of these sprayer units, the mod author offers no mercy. These have collision on right to the tips. So if you smack the tip of this thing against a tree, it will spin you around like a top. <laughs> and I don't know this from personal experience, of course. I, I heard. Yeah, I heard that that's, that that's what would happen. Whoops. Starting to get a little crooked. It's my darn nose getting in the way. Okay. But yeah, I will get back to uh, running some videos of other stuff. If you guys have any ideas, anything you want to see, well, let me know. Uh, I think currently, what do we got? We still got some farming giant going on. Although I think I might actually change and try and do one of the scenarios. But you never know. Might just see if we can't just get so huge that I can't fit it on the screen anymore. Or some other silly goal like that. Um, got some... What the heck is it called? Uh, wow. See, there's that memory thing again. I do not kid about that, believe me. Uh, banished. <laughs> I could picture every single pixel in the game. I just couldn't think of what the heck they called it when you get kicked out of your own. But, uh, although by all rights, the Colonial Charter mod, you're not really in that scenario where you've been banished. You're sent out to recolonize. I suppose at times those things did follow the same purposes, you know what I mean? But, uh, probably should be looked at a little different. But anyway, yeah, we've got Banished going on. I've also been doing a little bit of Freight Tycoon, but, ah, uh, see what I mean? Oh, we just got off that one in time. Don't stop and make a big puddle. Goodness gracious. Yeah, those, uh... <laughs> We're still awful close. There we go. See, I've also been doing a little bit of the Freight Tycoon, but it's... I mean, you can look at this game and go, boy, that's repetitive. Uh, as fun a game as Freight Tycoon is, and in fact, if you're into those sort of time management, sort of micromanagement games, um... For the two or three bucks, and I think I paid like a couple of dollars Canadian for it, you're probably not going to find a better example. Oh man, we're close to that one. So I do enjoy playing it, but uh, I only have one possible thing really left to do in Farlight Explorers, and that of course is build the ship, and 80% of it's already built, it's just sitting there waiting our final adjustments. And we are almost done here, guys. And then, 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 see there's the part I missed where our so-called hired help was of no help at all. So now we have a big patch. Alright, well, we know what time that is then. It must be time to accelerate. Of course, this is so wasteful, isn't it? I mean, think about it. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. We've been working for half an hour today. Now we're going to accelerate all the way to the next day. Hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> you know that? Um, at least, I think this time, I'm going to do a couple of the uh, sort of little in-betweeny things that I do need to do. Things that we've already done, if not on this particular playthrough, then certainly on the last one. I get a little bit of straw into the cow barn or something. So I think I'm going to call it here for this time around, guys. Oh, excuse me. So, if you enjoyed the episode, please hit the like button. 
does my channel a world of good. I'm quite amazed, actually. I'm getting uh, a reasonable number. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm too busy talking to even be driving. I don't want to be where I'm going. Um, but you need a reasonable number of subscribers lately. It's absolutely fascinating and to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to really thank all of you that have uh, come on board lately for doing so. And of course, to those of you that have been around for a while and are actually still watching my videos, well, a big thank you to you too. But for now, I think I'm going to leave her. We've, uh, we've done pretty well. Pretty well indeed. I'm going to take this guy back and perk him up and call her a day, I think. So, till next time, this has been Species 7 from Grazyland and Farm Sim 15. Oh, check it out. Looks like the uh, spray mechanism, arms and stuff, and tires and such at least get dirty on it. Cool. It is a nice mod, eh? Not bad. Not bad at all. Alright. Take care of each other, folks. Till next time. Ciao.